HyperSim is an application that consists of several simulators. Among them, this demonstration will focus on frac width. The frac width simulator uses Poisson's ratio and Young's modulus to determine the potential for fracture formation. To simulate the fracture possibility, specific input data must be provided. Input data requirements, minimum and maximum horizontal stresses. The first and most critical inputs are the expected minimum and maximum horizontal stress. If direct measurements of these stresses are unavailable, they can be estimated using various indirect methods, such as geomechanical models, combining data from logs, tests, and empirical correlations. Sonic logs provide dynamic elastic properties for stress calculations. Density logs help calculate overburden stress. Pore pressure models estimate pore pressure, which influences the minimum horizontal stress. Empirical relationships use known properties of similar formations to approximate stress magnitudes. Borehole imaging logs provide insights into well bore breakouts or tensile fractures, aiding stress estimation. Vertical stress calculations derived from density logs to assess overburden stress. For this demonstration, let's assume the minimum horizontal stress is 5,200 PSI and the maximum horizontal stress is 5,600 PSI. Minimum and maximum hydraulic pressures. The second required inputs are the minimum and maximum hydraulic pressures applied to the formation. The minimum hydraulic pressure originates from the hydrostatic column of drilling fluid in a static condition. The maximum hydraulic pressure is derived from the equivalent circulating density, ECD. The ECD accounts for static hydrostatic pressure, the effect of drilling cuttings concentration in the annulus, and frictional pressure losses while circulating fluids. For this demonstration, we will assume the minimum hydraulic pressure is 5,650 PSI and the maximum hydraulic pressure is 6,000 PSI. Key considerations. As evident, the minimum bottom hole pressure must exceed the maximum horizontal stress to avoid wellbore instability. Failing to maintain this pressure balance can lead to compression failure or breakout failure, causing the wellbore walls to collapse into the borehole, which may result in a hole collapse scenario. Hole size. The minimum hole size corresponds to the bit size or the desired in-gauge hole condition during drilling. The maximum hole size, on the other hand, includes any hole enlargement caused by washout. As the hole size increases, the hoop stress, the circumferential stress around the borehole, decreases, which increases the risk of fracture in the formation. For this example, let's assume the minimum and maximum hole sizes are 8.5 inches and 9 inches, respectively. Estimation of natural fracture length. The length of natural fractures in a formation can be estimated using certain types of logs that provide insights into the fracture characteristics. Formation Microimager, FMI, offers high-resolution imaging of fractures intersecting the borehole wall. Acoustic logs, example, sonic scanner, detects fracture-induced changes in acoustic wave propagation. Dipole shear sonic imager, DSI, measures shear wave and isotropy caused by fractures, offering fracture density and orientation insights. Cross dipole acoustic logs, detects variations in shear wave velocity and attenuation to infer fracture characteristics. Beyond logging tools, other techniques can also assist in estimating natural fracture length. Core analysis, provides direct measurement of fracture dimensions from recovered core samples. Pressure transient testing, PTT, utilizes well-test data to infer fracture extent based on fluid flow behavior. micro seismic data, tracks fracture propagation and network distribution during activities like hydraulic fracturing. Advanced petrophysical models, combines log-derived data with models to extrapolate fracture length and spacing. If no specific data is available for the natural fracture length estimation, it is recommended to assume a minimum fracture length 
of 6 inches and a maximum fracture length of 10 inches for simulation purposes. Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. If these data are available, please enter them into the respective text boxes. If the data are not available, refer to the typical Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio table and select the formation type that best represents the expected formation to evaluate the risk of fracture formation. For this example, let's double click on unconsolidated sandstone to automatically transfer the typical values for this formation type into the text boxes. Young's modulus is a measure of a material stiffness or rigidity. It quantifies the relationship between stress, force per unit area, and strain, proportional deformation, in the linear elastic range. A higher Young's modulus indicates a stiffer material that resists deformation under stress. Poisson's ratio is the ratio of lateral strain, deformation in the perpendicular direction to the applied force, to axial strain, deformation along the direction of the applied force when a material is stretched or compressed. Most materials have a Poisson's ratio between 0 and 0 0.5. A Poisson's ratio of 0 0.5 indicates that the material is nearly incompressible, with lateral and axial deformations being nearly equal. For example, rubber has a Poisson's ratio close to 0 0.5. Let's click the Run button to compute the minimum, maximum, and average fracture widths. In this example, the computer results are as follows. Minimum fracture width, 288 microns. Maximum fracture width, 5,252 microns. Average fracture width, 606 microns. Note, the entered input data, including the minimum and maximum values, play a critical role in determining fracture widths. For instance, an increase in Young's modulus reduces the risk of fracture formation, which reflects in a lower maximum fracture width. Conversely, a higher maximum Young's modulus influences the minimum fracture width, leading to narrower fractures. The same interpretation applies to other input parameters, as they directly influence whether fractures widen or narrow, depending on their values. Additionally, the average fracture width is computed based on the average of the entered input data. For example, in this run, the Young's modulus is averaged at 0 0.75, calculated as 0 0.2 plus 1.3 divided by 2 equals to 0 0.75. For the minimum or maximum fracture width, either the minimum input data or a maximum input data is used, depending on which value influences fracture width increment or reduction. This ensures that the fracture width reflects the direct effect of the input parameter on the fracture's behavior. To extract the frac width report, click on the Report Viewer button. Next, select the desired report format, Word, PDF, or Excel. For this example, let's choose PDF format and proceed. Now, let's select the average fracture width and proceed to Hypersizer to determine the appropriate LCM material that can effectively seal a fracture of 606 microns. In Hypersizer, follow these steps. 1. Open the Bridging Rule drop-down menu and select the Fracture Rule D90 for this purpose. 2. Under Known Information, select Pore Size or Fracture Width. 3. Enter the fracture width, D90, as 606 microns. Next, for the products, choose the following calcium carbonate options, 100, 1000, 150, 300, 400, 50, fine, and medium. Set the required LCM concentration to 100 pounds per barrel. Then, Click the Run button. As shown in the results, the target D90 is 606 microns. A combination of calcium carbonate 400 and fine at concentrations of 40 pounds per barrel and 60 pounds per barrel respectively provides a D90 
of 606.37 microns, which is the closest possible match to the target of 606 microns. I hope this demo has provided a comprehensive overview of frac width.